How's it going everybody? You're watching Then About Tech and Apple has just released its first major update to iOS 17, iOS 17.1. So finally, after so many small, little, incremental software updates with just bug fixes and security updates, iOS 17.1 is here with a ton of new features, a ton of improvements, and I'm gonna tell you all of them and explain you everything you need to know. Of course, I'll also talk about performance, battery, and even if you should update or not. So. Let's get started. The first new feature actually has to do with AirDrop. So go into your settings and then scrolling down a bit until general and then AirDrop right here, you'll see this new option called out of range. And you even see the option to use cellular data. What does it mean? Well, now in iOS 17.1, when you're using AirDrop to transfer any file, photo or video, you don't need the other iPhone to be right next to it until the end of the transfer. No, 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 just the beginning of the transfer. And then if you want to, you can move the two devices far apart and the transfer, the AirDrop transfer will finish over the internet. So that's why you can choose here if you want to allow this feature to use cellular data or just Wi-Fi. So let me show you how it works. Uh, I've got here a video prepared, okay, and I'm gonna transfer via AirDrop using the new animation, okay, in iOS 17. As you can see, perfect, it's transferring right now, and I don't need to keep them close to each other. I can even put this really far away, no problem at all, because the transfer will continue if it's a big file or a ton of photos, and sometimes it takes a while, right? No problem, you just need both phones or both Apple devices to be close to each other in the beginning of the pairing process. If they are paired and the process starts, as you can see, you can move them apart, no problem at all, the airdrop will finish. So cool. Now let's talk about standby mode because we have a new feature here as well. Unfortunately, we don't have new widgets or new screens or anything like that, but we have a new setup option. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go here to our settings once again and then scroll down until you see standby and right here display. And unfortunately, this new feature specifically is exclusive to iPhones with the always on display. So 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max, 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. But now you have the possibility to choose automatically after 20 seconds and never. And that's when your display turns off. So automatically, which is the option I recommend, is you put your iPhone in standby mode, right? As you just saw. And then after a while, the display will turn off and it'll turn back on based on motion. Pretty much like when you're charging your Apple Watch uh, on your bedside table, right? Then you tap on the table, it vibrates, and then the Apple Watch comes back to life, right? The, the, the screen turns on, this is how it works. So then it's gonna automatically adapt and turn on just when necessary. Uh, you have after 20 seconds, so then it's gonna be on, standby mode, and then after 20 seconds, it's gonna turn off. I don't recommend that and never so then it's always gonna be on so that's bad as well for your battery in the long run it's really bad for battery health and battery degradation and everything like that so don't use never either so automatically is a great option for using standby on iPhones with the always on display. Now let's talk about music. So if you use Apple Music like I do, you're gonna love this. So now we have the possibility to favorite songs, albums, artists, playlists, absolutely anything here in Apple Music. So the way it works is you get an album, for example, you open it up and then on any song that you wanna pick, as you can see, those two are already favorited, right? In this one as well. So the way it works is you're gonna tap on the song, right? It's playing. And then you have this new button right there. As you press on it, now it's favorite. It's a favorite song. And you can do this for anything you want, for whole albums if you want to, on the three dots right here, and then favorite. So 
anything that you want in Apple Music. So this is very nice because it's an easy way to see the songs, albums, artists, playlists that you love. And it's super easy to see because anywhere on Apple Music now, for example, if you go to your songs, so those are all of your songs, right? Now, anywhere, you tap on the three slats and then you have favorite it and then all of them are here. So that is a very, very nice way to see your favorite stuff, right? But it doesn't end there because there's something very, very cool here on the playlist as well. So uh, if you take a look at playlists that you have created, so let's go ahead here and take a look at this one. Uh, now you have the possibility to change this artwork because by default Apple Music will pick four random albums here and put them as artwork of the playlist, right? And this doesn't look really cool. So you have the possibility now to tap on the three dots, edit, and then you can choose a picture of your own from your iPhone, any photo that you want or use one of those templates which are really, really nice if you ask me. So then you can tap on done and then you have it right here, so then you have this possibility. And even further, and all that I'm showing you here is new, right, in 17.1, if you are on a playlist that you have created as well, you can scroll all the way down, and bear with me, this is a huge playlist, okay? Uh, and here, you'll see song suggestions. That's right, so based on the songs that are here on this playlist that you have created, right? So based on the genres and on the artists and the albums and the age and everything like that, it's gonna actually suggest new music for you. So you can go ahead, listen, you can straight ahead add or even reload and it's gonna show more options. So very, very nice, a great update for us Apple Music users. Now let's talk about something that's new and it's exclusive to the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max because it has to do with the new action button right here and it's the fact that if you use the action button as flashlight or as camera, now in 17.1 it's not gonna be activated anymore if it's on your pocket. So if your iPhone is on your pocket, right? And if you press on this button, on the action button, no flashlight, no more, no camera. So this is very good because so many times iPhone in your pocket, it would press because of tight jeans, for example, and then it would activate the flashlight and then become super hot, drain your battery so bad, right? So now if your iPhone is locked, right? and it's in your pocket and the iPhone knows because of the sensor right here, I'm gonna simulate that. So I'm gonna cover the sensor as you can see and the screen, the display will turn black in a few seconds as you can see right now, it's completely black. So then if I press here, the action button, no flashlight, no flashlight at all. And as you can see, as it comes back to life, um, the flashlight is mapped. So it now understands that it's in your pocket and then it won't activate, but again, only for flashlight and camera. And talking about the flashlight, I don't know if you saw, but there's this specific animation here in the dynamic island for the camera that was exclusive to the iPhone 15 Pro series, but now in 17.1, it's actually available on all iPhones with the dynamic island. So the iPhone 14 Pro, Pro Max, and the whole 15 series. And it's a very nice, cool little animation. You can tap on it, turn it off if you want to. So nice. And there was no reason to be exclusive to the 15 Pro, right? So now it's on all iPhones with Dynamic Island. We have something new as well, right here on your lock screen. So if you're here on the lock screen, right? And then you go ahead and use your face to unlock, tap and hold, you can choose a new wallpaper, right? So tap on plus. Now, if you use Photo Shuffle, this possibility right here, take a look, if you tap on Photo Shuffle, now you have the possibility to choose specific albums to be in the Photo Shuffle, so to show up in your lock screen. And this is actually really, really nice because even if you like seeing your photos in your lock screen and everything like that, uh, the way it worked before is it would shuffle all your photos your whole photo library. And that's kind of complicated because sometimes you have private photos, right? So now you have the possibility to choose album and then choose the album and then it just shuffle photos from that specific album. And in my opinion, this is really good, okay? So here's something new, this is really great. Now talking about the wallet, more specifically users of Discover cards 
from the US and the UK, uh, now you have more possibilities with your wallet app, like seeing your transactions and seeing your bank statements and more. So you pretty much have kind of a Apple card experience, even if you use Discover in the US and the UK. And last but not least, of course, talking about new features because we have a ton more to cover, right? Right here in the home app, we have more compatibility with Matter. So now, if you use door locks with Matter, you can use them in the home app on your iPhone. Now let's talk about improvements and those are pretty much bug fixes and security updates, okay? So let's go ahead here to our settings and then on screen time, there was a problem in iOS 17 um, that sometimes if you use the screen time on multiple devices, uh, it would actually not be accurate. It wouldn't sync accurately. So uh, your limits, your times, uh, all of your graphs and everything like that. Now in 17.1, that's more accurate, that's fixed. Heading back to our settings, this time scrolling down here to privacy and security and then location services and then scrolling all the way down to system services we have significant locations i've talked about significant locations many times here on the channel and if you want to know what this is this is a pretty big deal actually i'm gonna leave a card and link in the description so the thing about significant locations is there was this bug where when you were pairing an apple watch or transferring from an iPhone to another, it would reset, erase those significant locations. It was a weird bug, but this was happening. So then fixed in 17.1. Now let's talk about phone calls. There was this bug when, when you were talking to somebody on the phone, normal phone call, and then you had another person calling you, like on hold, uh, you couldn't see the name, the contact, the number, of that person, so you wouldn't know who's calling you, right? So then this was fixed in 17.1. Now let's get back to our settings and then scroll down into sounds and haptics and then here, tax tone, as you can see. So the problem was exactly here. Uh, in iOS 17, sometimes you wouldn't see your custom tax tones and even purchased uh, tax tones. So this was kind of annoying. Now this is fixed. And by the way, if you want to learn how to create and add any tax tone or any ringtone from any song that you want, any sound on the planet that you want, I show you how to do that for free. I'll leave a card and link in the description as well. Now let's talk about a bug fix that's really a big deal because it has to do here with your keyboard. The keyboard in iOS 17 was a mess. It was slow, unresponsive for many people, um, laggy, buggy, it just was really bad. And that's because iOS 17, they tweaked and improved the keyboard, the prediction and everything like that. And while they did that, they created some bugs as well. So iOS 17.1 fixes that and the keyboard is super smooth, so much better. Going back here to our settings, and this feels like last year, but if we scroll down and tap here on emergency SOS, Apple again said they improved crash detection. I've said this many times in many videos, this problem's going on for ages and ages, but still Apple's trying to figure out how to fix crash detection and make it work for the iPhone 14 and 15. Again, more improvements in iOS 17.1. And last but not least, a bug that actually happened to my iPhone yesterday which has to do with this glitch on the display that many people, and you see this a lot on Twitter or X, uh, which has to do with this ghost effect or burning effect where you would turn off your display and then you would still see uh, a blurred image or a slightly tinted image as if the display has a burning defect or something like that. Uh, the thing is, it wasn't uh, a problem with the display, it was just software and actually yesterday when I had it, I just restarted my iPhone and it was perfect, but it's fixed now in 17.1. And finally, let's talk about performance. So the thing is, you will feel um, iOS 17.1 better, smoother, faster than 17.0.3 or earlier versions. And that's not really because of uh, 
the operating system being faster and making your iPhone faster. And I say that because Geekbench tests prove that, that the performance is pretty much the same, just a little bit better than iOS 17.0 and 0.2, 0.3 and so on. Um, but you will have this feeling of being faster and more responsive and smoother and everything like that because of the bug fixes. Because it fixes issues, for example, like on the keyboard and many other small bugs that iOS 17 had. So because of that, yes, you will feel 17.1 as a better OS, faster and better, but it's not really faster in reality. But it's good, right? And to wrap it up, let's talk about battery. So if we actually come back here to our first page of our settings and scroll down until we see battery and then battery health and charging, uh, this iPhone is still too new, right? It's not even one month old. So you won't see any drop in maximum capacity or anything like that. It's still gonna be 100%. Uh, but I can tell you that I really like the way uh, iOS 17 is treating the battery because of this. If we take a look at last 10 days, and if we take a look at, for example, last Friday or Thursday, I, you can see that on 100%, so on a full charge, right, on a full discharge, so using 100% of my battery, not necessarily 100 to zero, right, but using 100%, I got nine hours and 10 minutes of screen active time. That's excellent nine hours on a full charge is really good. And as you can see, it's pretty consistent. It goes from nine to eight hours, depending of course on screen idle time as well. And what I can tell you is if your iPhone is getting, is averaging between seven and nine hours of screen active time, screen on time with 100% of battery usage, that's absolutely great. That's excellent and you shouldn't worry. And answering the question about iOS 17.1 and battery, I don't really think iOS 17 had a problem with the battery. And I'm saying overall, uh, iOS 16 was really bad for battery. It was the worst and I had so many videos on it, but that's not the case with iOS 17. iOS 17 had compatibility issues, bugs, um, and other kinds of problems, but not really the battery. So I don't see any problems here again in iOS 17.1. It's treating iPhone batteries really, really well, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing, okay? So uh, if you ask me if you should update to iOS 17.1, definitely go ahead and do it. It's a great update, a major software update with many new features. Uh, of course, bug fixes, improvements, security updates, and you name it. So go ahead and update right now, especially if you are already in iOS 17, right? So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video as usual, guys. Bye bye.